Good evening, my name is Kelly K. Clark, and I am a recent graduate of the University of Kansas Higher Education Administration Master's Program. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, I hope in the near future to work with college women like all of you here, and I am very humbled to be here standing in front of you today. Um, Katie Miller, will you please come and join me at this podium? <laughs> Katie Miller spent the first half of her undergraduate education at the U.S. Military Academy where she was ranked eighth in her class out of more than 1,000 cadets. An inspiring, aspiring Army officer, Miller could not reconcile her pride in her position with the daily half-truths required from her under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, the law that prohibited gay people like her from serving openly in the military. In 2010, she made national headlines by announcing her resignation from West Point on live television and revealing her sexuality to the American public. <laughs> Thanks, snaps to that. Um, <laughs> Miller immediately joined the founding board of OutServe, a then underground network of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, or LGBT, service members, and traveled the media circuit to advocate the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. She has appeared on MSNBC, CNN, and ESPN, um, been featured by the New York Times, Glamour Magazine, and the Associated Press. She has spoken at campuses across the country. She also escorted Lady Gaga to the 2010 MTV Video Music Awards in a, in a public demonstration for the discriminatory laws repeal. A Truman Scholar and Point Foundation Scholar, um, Miller graduated in 2012 from Yale University with a bachelor's degree in political science. She continues to advocate for LGBT service members as a chair of a policy committee for the newly merged OutServe Service Members Legal Defense Network, making her the youngest board member of a major LGBT organization. Miller is also a regular contributor to OutServe Magazine, uh, where she has published significant pieces on military policy for HIV positive members and the issue of transgender military service. Miller joined the LGBT Research and Communications Project at the Center for American Progress last fall, and she looks forward to rejoining the military in the near future. Katie Miller, your confidence is an inspiration to young LGBT women, men, and allies. Um, you have inspired me and others to strive for equality for all Americans. It is with great admiration for your work that the National Conference for College Women Student Leaders, organizers and attendees, including myself, honor and recognize you as a 2013 Woman of Distinction. Can you all see me? I know I'm a little short. I forgot my heels at home today. So. <laughs> so, I'm honored and deeply humbled to stand alongside such a talented group of women uh, on stage tonight and to be recognized as a woman of distinction this year. I hope I can instill in you the idea that leadership knows no gender, no age, no sexual orientation. It's about believing in yourself, believing in your convictions, inspiring others to do the same. But today, specifically, I want to talk to you about this notion of compromise. We hear the importance of the word uh, from bickering politicians to our bickering parents. Um, compromise is important, don't get me wrong. Our, our country was founded on the principles of compromise. But there's a severe misunderstanding of the word, uh, especially among young women, my peers. So when I was at West Point, I came out to one of my very close friends who was older, higher ranking, and also happened to be a lesbian. I told her that I suffered under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I thought about resigning from the academy so that I could do something about it, so that I could make my voice heard. She discouraged me, saying that there's plenty of us out there. The rest of us keep our heads down and our profile is low. That way, even if we hurt inside, we can still continue serving our country. 
That's our trade-off. That's our sacrifice. That's our compromise. So as you, you know now, um, I didn't follow that advice precisely. So um, I came out as gay on the Rachel Maddow show um, in, uniform, in uniform while I was sitting um, in my cadet barracks. Um, and, you know, classmates came to my door and told me, we're not angry with you for being gay, but you could have and you should have waited until someone else repealed don't ask, don't tell. You didn't have to do it this way. So, People in your life will constantly ask you to be reasonable. I know it's difficult to refuse them. I know, I really do. But perhaps even more condescendingly, they'll ask you to be patient. So let me be clear. Do not ever let someone tell you to be patient, ever. A wise man once said, justice too long denied, or I'm sorry, excuse me, I can't believe I messed that up. <laughs> justice, justice too long delayed is justice denied, wrote the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as he was sitting in a jail in Alabama. When my friends at West Point said that thousands of others were suffering and keeping their mouths shut, I told her, well, I'll be damned, maybe I'm one in a thousand, and maybe I should be the one in all the thousands that stands up and says something. When my friends told me that they didn't agree with the fact that, uh, they didn't, didn't disagree with the fact that I was gay, but the fact that I was wearing a uniform and making a political statement and revealing that I was gay, see, the military was sensitive about that kind of thing a while ago. I told them that they didn't understand the fact that for 17 years this country has never known someone who is LGBT and still serving in the military. I could have waited until I was no longer a cadet to say something. I could have waited for someone else to stand up and say something for me. At the very least, I could have taken off my uniform, they said. Or I could escort Lady Gaga to the 2010 Video Music Awards <laughs> so that the entire country would wake up and see what they could not see before. LGBT Americans serve the country, country with honor and dignity, and this is what they look like. You see, compromise doesn't mean conceding your opinions. It doesn't mean moderating your convictions. Your convictions are not malleable. They are the bedrock of your morality. It resides deep down inside of you. Compromise will always mean pe meeting people halfway finding a solution somewhere between two vastly opposing viewpoints. It does not mean entering a room ready to concede your convictions without ever putting up a fight. When you consciously occupy the middle ground, you see compromise looks a lot more like the other guy's beliefs than your own. So many people forget that when President Bill Clinton signed Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the law, it was supposed to be a compromise. Before, you see, the military had this outright ban on gays, and under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, you could still serve, but you had to keep it a secret, which wasn't technically a ban. Um, but we all know how that worked out. And when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was implemented, more people were discharged for being gay than ever before in our nation's history, and those numbers continued to increase. It was no compromise. Just like civil unions are not a su su suitable substitute for marriage equality for gays and lesbians today. <laughs> See, don't ask, don't tell was watered down homophobia. In theory, and in practice, it was just damaging to the men and women in uniform who bravely volunteer to serve this country. Compromise is supposed to be a win-win situation. That's not how Don't Ask, Don't Tell worked out. So as a woman, I know, I know, I know, there's pressure to be accommodating. Society expects you to be a mediator. As a woman, it's unpopular to be opinionated, to be controversial, sometimes even to be passionate. But we have to break out of that mold. If you don't trust your convictions and believe in yourself to make the big decisions, then guess what? No one else will either. So the next time you enter a room full of people, I challenge you to figure out what it is you really believe in and know how hard you're willing to fight to make that a reality. 
Sometimes you'll walk out of that room and compromise, you know, will have truly resulted in a win-win situation. But sometimes you'll walk into that room and you're just plain right, and there's no two ways about it. So, so. I just want to end on, uh, damn, it feels good to be right, and thank you very much for the honor. Appreciate it.